Greetings and welcome. You're tuned into TMH's Daily English News. Ethiopia called for tighter controls on aid shipments to the country's war-stricken Tigray region. The Ethiopian government accused aid agencies of delivering banned equipment that could be used by Tigray forces and more fuel than is currently allowed. After months of hiatus, the government in April authorized the delivery of desperately needed aid by land to Tigray, which has long been under what the United Nations has described as a de facto blockade. Special attention should be given to prevent equipment from being transferred to the TPLF, said Ethiopian Deputy Prime Minister Demak Amokonen on Saturday, referring to Tigray's ruling party, Tigray People's Liberation Front. Demak said he has noticed efforts to transport more fuel than allowed and some banned equipment that he claimed can be used by Tigray forces in the war. Demak who was speaking during a visit to the northwestern Afar region where the aid convoys depart to neighboring Tigray, did not specify what kind of equipment was involved. Efforts by the Customs Commission and other entities to ensure control and surveillance of the banned equipment should be boosted, he added. The UN's humanitarian agency, OSHA, said last week that while fuel for humanitarian operations had been allowed into Tigray over the past two months, the volume was insufficient and reserves were at low levels. Nutrition partners, for instance, need about 24,000 liters of fuel to dispatch available nutrition supplies, including life-saving therapeutic milk, and ready-to-use therapeutic and supplementary foods to about 240 health facilities across the entire region, is said in the latest update published on Friday. The Australian College of Nursing joins international calls to address health system collapse within Ethiopia. The Australian College of Nursing is joining its colleagues at the International Council of Nurses and the Ethiopian Nurses Association in calling for urgent measures to address the collapse of the healthcare system in Tigray, Ethiopia after 18 months of the war in region. ICN is a federation of more than 130 national nurses associations and has worked with the ENA to spotlight the deteriorating situation for nurses and healthcare workers within the Tigray region. They reported that the communications, pay, and health services are blocked by the government despite a humanitarian truce. As Australia's leading representative of ICN, ACN, acting CEO Yvonne McKinley echoed their concerns about the conditions of nurses and healthcare professionals within the region. FAO says it's working to benefit 620,000 households with agricultural inputs in northern Ethiopia. Over 268,000 of these households are currently in Tigray. The Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations said it is working to benefit 620,000 households in conflict-affected areas of northern Ethiopia by providing agricultural inputs. East Africa and FAO representative to the African Union, East African and FAO representative to the African Union, Chimimba David Firi said in 2022, FAO targets to provide 620,000 households in northern Ethiopia, not only with with provision of inputs, but also agricultural production, particularly crop production, he added. It is also providing livestock services with regard to treatment of animal diseases and vaccinations, as well as rehabilitation of agriculture-related infrastructure. According to the UN, official of the 620,000 targeted households, 268 of them, or over 43%, are in Tigray, the rest being in Afar and the Amhara regions. So we are targeting these particular households to provide agricultural inputs starting with seeds, training, and extension, he added. The representative further explained that FAO has so far reached over 230 households in Tigray alone with 400 metric tons of seeds. He added FAO is supporting multiplication of 25 metric tons of seeds within the Tigray region. With regard to treatment of animal diseases in partnership with Tigray Regional Bureau of Agriculture, FAO has vaccinated 3.5 million animals and in Afar it has so far provided animal health services services for 230 livestock. FAO is very much involved as the lead organization for agriculture, food security, and nutrition in coordinating the activities of all other UN partners in these fields. 
Fury pointed out an example saying that right now the organization is coordinating the importation of fertilizer with three partners, mostly NGOs, that are importing through the support of the FAO. The long rainy season is coming up and FAO has already pre-positioned itself to supply the necessary seeds, the necessary farming tools, but also fertilizer. He said FAO is in the process of buying 6,700 tons and expects it in the next few weeks to reach beyond the 25,000 ton targeted for northern Ethiopia. Ethiopia alone. The FAO representative noted his organization had difficulty reaching all parts of northern Ethiopia, adding however it is now able to reach more and more areas as the conflict has gone down significantly. Commenting on the humanitarian truce declared by the government of Ethiopia in March 2022, he said how I'm very happy that the conflict is dying down because it provides opportunity for the farmers to go about their business of doing what they do best, which is farming, and FAO promotes farming as a business. However, the representative elaborated that the role of FAO is to support the government and the people by doing at capacity, building, and so on, and providing emergency aid and the inputs of necessary for communities to start. Optimizing U.S. Strategic Policy, a Regional Approach to Ethiopia Horn of Africa's chronic cycles of violent conflict and drought remain an enduring challenge to U.S. unilateral engagement. The U.S. risks being caught off guard by regions lower in policy priority that hold enormous potential to increase global instability. The U.S. government's approach to the unresolved conflict and weaponization of hunger in Ethiopia highlights these dilemmas, frustrating interventions rather than resolving them. The ongoing civil war between forces associated with the Ethiopian government, including the Eritrean Defense Forces and the Tigray Forces, has left approximately 7 million people in the northern highland region of Tigray, Afar, and Amhara in critical need of life-saving food aid. A de facto government blockade of Tigray, a corresponding fuel shortage, severely limited food, medical, and other humanitarian deliveries, the article noted that a ceasefire is an essential first step towards a durable political settlement. The AU's high representative for the Horn of Africa, Olsegun Sanjo, and the GCC should be empowered to negotiate accordingly. In Ethiopia, the U.S. can create a new pattern of U.S.-African engagement through empowering regional actors, a necessity when considering the increased breadth and magnitude of the threats to the U.S. global interests. <laughs> Ethiopia takes the spotlight as one of the top five conflict hotspots within Africa. GH headlines highlighted five conflict hotspots in Africa as representing many African countries that are grappling with various forms of conflicts, be it insurgency, militancy, or outright terrorism of war. Civil wars in Cameroon and DRC, terrorism, banditry and secessionist agitation in Nigeria, and terrorism in Mozambique are other conflict hotspots mentioned within the continent. According to findings by SOS Children's Villages International, these wars and conflicts sadly continue to be a major cause of poverty within Africa. Zimbabwe hints at sending genocide fugitive Mengistu home to Ethiopia to face justice, but critics aren't buying it. Zimbabwe's foreign minister, Frederick Shava, commented recently on sending Ethiopia's former brutal dictator Mengistu Haile Mariam home at last after three decades of asylum in Zimbabwe to serve the rest of his life in jail for genocide. If the people of Ethiopia approach the government of Zimbabwe, appropriate steps will be taken by the government of Zimbabwe in response to the request, the legitimate request from the government of Ethiopia, Zimbabwe's foreign minister Frederick Shava told the Voice of America. Shava's remark has sparked considerable interest and in speculation about a possible radical about turn in Zimbabwe's policy. In 2006, he was tried in absentia in Addis Ababa, found guilty of genocide and other charges after a 12-year trial and sentenced to life in prison. His main offense was directing the Red Terror in the late 1970s to try to eliminate his political opposition, mainly the Ethiopian People's Revolution Party. Tens of thousands of opponents were killed or tortured. But former president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, refused to send him back to face trial or serve his sentence. Mugabe himself was ousted in place of coup by Vice President Emerson Mnangagwa in November 2017, but he too showed no signs of surrendering Mengistu. Now, Chavez surprised statement suggests that Menangagwa's position might be shifting and Zimbabwe's commentators are rather bemused but also skeptical. (laughs) 